कंट्रोल एंड कोऑर्डिनेशन द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स दे हैव डिफरेंट ऑर्गन्स ऑल ऑर्गन्स हैव यू नो डिफरेंट वर्क्स एंड दे शुड वर्क इन कोऑपरेशन एंड कोऑर्डिनेशन सो व्हेन दे वर्क टुगेदर टू मेक अ लिविंग बीइंग पॉसिबल दिस इज नोन एज कोऑर्डिनेशन so proper control and prob this coordination is uh, very much required necessary to carry out the essential functions of the living being or life animals they have nervous system in this nervous system it consists of a very specialized nerve which we called as neurons this is a structure of a neuron so a typical neuron or uh, consist of a cell body this is a cell body and we have an axon this is an axon and dendrites these branches these are dendrites cell body has a nucleus this is a nucleus so these dendrites these are responsible for detecting the information from the outside environment and this information is been picked up by this dendritic tips and they set off the electrical pulse that travel from the dendrite to the cell body and then to axon this is the structure of the neuron now reflex action whenever there is some stimulus there is something happening or the body reacts to it sudden sudden uh, response to these environmental stimulus is known as reflex for instance uh, we uh, can know if we touch something which is hot so we just at at the fraction of second we take our hands out of the flame or the object which is hot this is the reflex arc and we the basically this is a pathway and we have brain here brain in our head then we have spinal cords these are all sensory stuff stand sensory uh, veins that connects here and then it goes to brain so sensory neurons synapse is the spinal cord before it passes to the brain so the pathway is known as reflex arc uh, eye is one of the receptor the all the organs here means all the skin of course is a sensory part of the body so there is a response which needs to be done so when we have a sensory neuron so it goes to your brain here decision making or conscious thought is being done then the spinal reflect or reflex arc this is quite rapid and involuntary this is a motor neuron this is how effector does when whenever there is some response so this is a path it's, it's called a reflex arc all the vertebrates the nervous system is classified as central nervous system and a peripheral nervous system so the brain and spinal cords these are part of the central nervous system the peripheral nervous system this consist of autonomic nervous system and somatic nervous system this autonomic nervous system it consist of spinal nerves it consist of cranial nerves this is human brain so brain is divided into four brain the mid brain and hin brain i can take you to one more figure of this structure of human brain and there are we will be talking about the thalamus hypothalamus these are the glands pituitary glands this is cerebrum corpus uh, callosum and ventricles of course the mid brain cerebrum and brain stem so we started with brain brain has four brain mid brain and hind brain the four brain this consist of a cerebrum the hypothalamus and thalamus so this four brain is specialized for what for hearing for sight for smell it also controls involuntary movement in our body like the leg muscles involuntary means the the action of our body that doesn't need any any thinking while you are walking you don't need anything you may be thinking in your head about something else and you are walking then we have center for hunger this is also located in the separate part of the forebrain itself 
the cerebral or you can call it as a cerebral cerebral cortex it consists of four lobes the peripheral this peripheral lobe this is temporal lobe this is occipital lobe and frontal lobe so these are the different lobes lobes of the brain then we have midbrain so midbrain is located between the front and hind brain so here midbrain is located so it contains uh, or it controls certain involuntary actions in the body as i said walking type of thing and uh, the voluntary things uh, are walking but involuntary things are which are not happening by itself the brain needs to do something to indicate or to direct our body part to do something so this controls involuntary actions not the voluntary actions like walking then the hind brain consists of pons medulla and cerebrum and it consists of the salivation the blood pressure and the vomiting you might have seen people vomiting when they are on the um, you know going on a height means going on a mountain road cerebrum also controls certain important parts such as riding a bicycle picking up the pencil and you know also maintains the posture and balance of the body you might have seen people who are drunk who are in the uh, action of alcohol they can't stand properly they they can't balance themselves so this is the part of the brain which is affected which is not good brain is protected by a bony there is a proper bony case we call it as cranium it's a cranium so cranium also contains certain fluid filled with uh, this is known as uh, cerebrospinal cerebrospinal fluid that protects this brain from any you know minor me mechanical shock or injury and vertebral column the spinal cord is supported by the vertebral column how these nervous tissues they cause action see first the information is received and the information is received by nervous tissue then it goes to brain muscles and this causes or this indicates some action so the junction between the two neutron uh, neurons the neurons this is junction this is known as synapse and information these are passed from one neutron neuron to another neuron this is via it can be in, of, by two means electrical or chemical transmission so electrical transmission and chemical transmission in electrical transmission there is no need of any neurotransmitter chemical transmission neurotransmitter is required in electrical transmission this is a fast mode of nerve impulse transmission as compared to electrical transmission chemical transmission is a slow mode of nerve impulse transmission impulses are directly transmitted from one neuron to another in the electrical transmission but in chemical transmission it is not directly transmitted from one neuron to another but there is it has to go to some medium how does coordination in plant take place because plants do not have any nervous system or muscle but they do respond to the stimulus for example mimosa pudica a touch me not plant if it is touch it folds its leaf and droop so there are two types of movement in this plant one is dependent on growth and one is independent of growth so there are two types of movements when we touch this mimosa pudica it leaves fold uh, but no growth occurs that means it means it does not involve any growth so it, it, it is independent of growth but uh, if you move seedling from one say paddy seedling uh, or some seedling then it grows because because there is, it is dependent on the growth so plant convey information from cell to cell through the electrical chemical means so hormone which are produced in plants these are hormones these are the functions so auxins so this is promoting the root growth cytokinin for promoting the shoot growth and the you can say branch growth and cell division this gibberellin is for the promotion of flower abscisic acid for retarding the growth and ethylene it helps in fruit ripening
when it comes to movement due to growth see the most common example you can take is of movement of growth of tendrils so these tendrils are quite sensitive to touch but when they come in contact with say certain object the part of tendril which is away from the object this will go faster as compared to the part of tendril which is somewhat closer or in in contact with the objects so it is a directional movement and it appears that if the plant is actually moving so this directional movement of plants these are known as tropic movements and the movement can be say towards the stimulus or it can be away from the stimulus as well there are certain example of some movements in plant like the phototropism that is the movement movement due to light the gravitopism that is the movement due to gravity hydrotropism movement due to water and chemotropism this is the movement due to some chemicals endocrine glands all these which you see here these are human body glands endocrine glands so they are chemical messengers very small quantity they are being secreted in very small quantity but they are chemical messengers and there are two type of glands endocrine glands and exocrine glands endocrine and exocrine these endocrine glands they do not have ducts because they do not have ducts they can't carry the secretion they produce the hormones right from here we start hypothalamus pituitary pineal thyroid then parathyroid here itself thymus then this is adrenal and we have kidney pancreas especially for you know different juices for digestion then ovaries uterus testes these are testes these balls are testes so this exocrine glands they do not have ducts to carry their secretion they they do have sorry endocrine they do not have ducts to carry their secretion but exocrine they do have ducts to carry their secretion there are certain different hormones being secreted in the body and their function we must know endocrine gland like the thyroid gland so this produces thyroxine 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 that is regulating the metabolism of food carbohydrate protein fat adrenal gland this produces adrenaline it is secreted at the time of fear fight flight you know all you know high powered fast activities adrenal gland produces adrenaline pancreas this produces insulin and glucagon which regulate glucose metabolism in our body you might have seen people saying that i have sugar that means there is a problem of insulin testes this produce male hormone this is testosterone and this is for and specially required for female the secondary sexual characteristic like the beard like the mustache the broad shoulders etc this testes is important for that pituitary gland pituitary gland it secrete growth hormones that is regulating the growth and development of an organism so the growth the height the weight etc these are mostly dependent on the secretions from the pituitary gland then ovaries for female for women this this ovaries produce estrogen and this is needed for female sexual development female do not have the hairs on their chest they have a different uh, you know dif different aspect or different body structure than a male this is because of the ovaries somewhat 